Hello everyone, in this video we are going to study about Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome PCOS. Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome was originally described in 1935 by Steen and Levanthal. PCOS is a syndrome manifested by amenorrhea that is absence of menstruation, hirsutism, Hirsutism, there will be elevated testosterone level in the women, leading to excess facial hair growth. Obesity, associated with the enlarged polycystic ovaries. So you see, there are enlarged polycystic ovaries in which multiple immature follicles will be lined in the cortex of the ovary. The development of the primary follicle into a mature follicle is stopped. Instead, the mature, multiple immature follicles are found. Instead of mature follicles, many multiple immature follicles will be formed in polycystic ovary. This heterogeneous disorder is characterized by excessive androgen production by the ovaries mainly. So, the theca cells of the ovaries which produce androgen, when they start producing androgen in excess amount, then it can be a cause for PCOS. Excessive androgen production by ovaries. The PCOS is a multifactorial and polygenetic condition. Guys, multifactorial, it occurs as a result of interaction with the environment that is her lifestyle and genetics. And polygenetic means the multiple genes will be involved. So, PCOS is a multifactorial and polygenetic condition. Causes genetic predisposition. So, a girl, if her grandmother and her mother is having PCOS, she might also develop a tendency to get PCOS. Environmental factors, that is her lifestyle behaviors, her eating pattern, if she is taking a lot of junk, not exercising regularly, it can also be a cause. The environmental factors, that is multifactorial and genetic predisposition, that is polygenetic. Rotterdam criteria, if the girl is satisfying any two out of the three criteria, then the women, we can diagnose it to be PCOS. Any two out of these three criteria, criteria should be fulfilled or satisfied. Anovulation or oligoovulation, an ovulation, so there is complete absence of ovulation or there is a reduced ovulation, oligoovulation. Hyperandrogenism, we saw in the previous slide, the theca cells of the ovaries, they start producing androgen in excess amount. There is hyperandrogenism, clinical or biochemical. Polycystic ovaries, which are visible on ultrasound. So, when you do the USG, you find the polycystic ovaries. Pathophysiology. So, the woman having PCOS will have insulin resistance. You see, there is insulin resistance in a woman having PCOS. What usually insulin does? Uh, the insulin will be released from the pancreas. It will take the carbohydrate in our body and convert it into ATP for energy. But in case of the PCOS, insulin is not performing well. Since there is insulin resistance, the insulin's performance will be low. But the pancreas won't know. So, they think there is some uh, deficiency in the insulin. So, they keep on releasing more and more insulin so that the body can utilize the glucose. This will lead to a hyperinsulinemia. Since there is a hyperinsulin uh, resistance, the pancreas are going to release more and more insulin resulting in hyperinsulinemia. Then what happens? This hyperinsulinemia, in response to this, the theca cells of the ovaries are going to release more androgen. You see, the more androgen from the theca cells of the ovaries, the theca cells which are lining in the cortex of the ovaries, they are going to release more androgen. Normally what happens? The ovaries will release the androgen and it will be aromatized into estrogen. 
but here the aromatization won't take place and the androgen level will be high then you see the sex hormone binding globulin in the liver is reduced what's happening here the hyperinsulinemia in reaction to this the liver which releases the sex hormone binding globulin shbg they are going to reduce the shbg it is very important in binding the androgen since the shbg the hyperinsulinemia is going to affect the liver so shbg will be reduced so there is no binding of the androgen since the androgen is not binding there is a unbound androgen high androgen level hyperandrogenism resulting in increased testosterone levels so more free testosterone in the blood it might be a condition for hirsutism hope it is clear guys what happens here there will be insulin resistance pancreas keep on releasing more insulin resulting in hyperinsulinemia then this hyperinsulinemia will act on the ovary the theca cells will produce more androgen acting on the liver it will reduce the sex hormone binding globulin so what happens the binding won't happen and unbound androgen will be more so more testosterone in the blood resulting in conditions such as acne hirsutism like male like uh, hair growth on the face now we see pathophys pathology typically the ovaries are enlarged the ovarian volume is increased it is more than 10 cm cube you see the volume is increased it is more than 10 cm cube the stroma is increased the capsule is thickened and it is pearly white in color so the capsule of the ovary is going to be thickened and it is turning out into pearly white color there is a presence of more than 12 follicular cysts measuring about 2 to 9 mm in a diameter and they are crowded around the cortex guys you can see here what's happening the volume is increased to more than 10 then the stroma the stroma is also increased the capsule which is lining the ovary it is thickened and it has become pearly white in color now you see the multiple follicles which are more than 12 m uh, more than 12 follicles and the diameter this diameter of the follicle will be 2 to 9 mm and where is the um, follicles found around the cortex of the ovary you can see around the cortex these follicles will be found so this is the pathology in the ovaries what's happening volume will be more than 10 cm cube capsule will be thickened becoming pearly white there are more than 12 follicular cyst the cyst will be measuring 2 to 9 mm in diameter and they are found around the cortex now we move on to the clinical features the patient complains of increasing obesity abdominal that is in 50% of the patients suffering with pcos will complain of abdominal obesity menstrual abnormalities is found in 70% of the patients it is in the form of oligomenorrhea that is scanty menses reduced menses um, amenorrhea absence of menses or dysfunctional uterine bleeding infertility so a woman who has already married wants to conceive won't be able to conceive because of pcos and ovulation will be there or oligo ovulation ovulation doesn't take place so the ovum is not released the fertilization doesn't take place there is infertility in a woman suffering with pcos she will complain of infertility if she is married clinical features presence of hirsutism like we saw the excess facial hair the hirsutism acne oily skin and acne acanthosis nigricans this is a special feature in pcos acanthosis nigrican is characterized by specific skin changes due to insulin resistance guys we saw there is insulin resistor resistance in the pathophysiology because of this insulin resistance there will be some skin changes happening in the women the skin is thickened and pigmented it is becoming gray brown in color commonly the affecting sites are the nape of the neck inner thighs groin and axilla so there is acanthosis nigricans where there is a thickening and uh, graying pigmentation of the skin the commonly affected sites will be the nape of neck 
inner thighs groin and axilla heron syndrome in patients with pcos it is characterized by ha hyperandrogenism ir insulin resistance and acanthosis nigricans so to uh, in the summarization to all the clinical features you have to remember that it is as hair and syndrome ha hyperandrogenism ir insulin resistance and acanthosis nigricans the internal examination will relieve will reveal the bilateral enlarged cystic ovaries which may be not which may not be revealed due to obesity so guys uh, due to obesity when they are not uh, revealed when you do the internal examination they will reveal the bilaterally enlarged cystic ovaries we saw the picture of the cystic ovaries where the more than 12 follicular cysts were arranged in the stro uh, in the stroma of the ovaries in the cortex of the ovaries and they were 2 to 9 mm in diameter here uh, they are going to be bilaterally polycystic ovaries investigations sonography transvaginal sonography is specially useful in obese patients so obese patients have to undergo tvs ovaries are enlarged in volume more than 10 cm cube there is increased number more than 12 of the peripherally arranged cyst 2 to 9 mm are seen we have already discussed this now in the tvs we see here the color doppler tv scan showing the numerous small cysts with the increased ovarian stroma vascularity that is a typical picture of a tvs scan of pcos okay now let us estimate the serum levels these are the investigations you do the lh luteinizing hormone level or the ratio lh to fsh will be more than 2 is to 1 so lh level is increased raised level of estradiol and estrone so estradiol and estrone levels are increased especially the estrone level is markedly elevated the sex hormone binding globulin is reduced hyperandrogenism mainly from the ovary but less from the adrenals so the androgen is produced from the adrenal glands which are situated on top of kidneys and from the ovary but the androgen production is more from the ovaries and less from the kidneys in people suffering with pcos androstenedione dion is raised so another hormone androstenedione dion it is raised this is also raised hyperandrogenism only thing reduced is shbg level raised serum testosterone you see the testosterone level is more than 150 ng per dl dheas dehydroepiandrosterone levels they are marginally elevated so guys all when you do the serum fsh uh, serum values you see the fsh lh ratio will be raised estradiol estrone level raised androgen levels raised testosterone raised androstenedione raised dehydro dehydroepiandrosterone levels is raised only thing which is reduced is sex hormone binding globulin hope the serum values are clear now we move on to the insulin resistance ir raised the fasting insulin levels there is hyperinsulinemia so the fasting insulin levels will be more than 25 new i l per ml and sorry and the fasting glucose or insulin ratio will be less than 4.5 it will suggest the insulin resistance in 50% of the cases this values are going to be found fasting glucose level will be more than 25 new i u per ml and the glucose insulin ratio is less than 4.5 now the levels of serum is uh, insulin response is more than 300 new iu per ml at two hours post glucose so fasting insulin levels were more than two, uh, 25 new iu per ml now here the post glucose two hours post glucose when you give 75 mg of glucose load you see the insulin levels will be more than 300 hyperinsulinemia it will suggest the severe insulin resistance now we move on to the laparoscopy in laparoscopy we see bilaterally polycystic ovaries which is a characteristic of pcos 
You can look into the picture here. There is a laparoscopic view of the polycystic changes PCOS of the ovary. Multiple small peripheral cysts are seen on the ovarian surface. You can see the multiple small cysts, the bubbles like. Thank you. With this, uh, we come to an end of polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you like my video, hit the like button and subscribe.